Welcome. Thanks for joining me for today's mini talk. It's our dream here at Drive By D&D to get one-to-one -one mini representation for our D&D games because minis are super sleek and sexy. If you've seen previous episodes, you know I'll be sharing my ever-expanding minis collection, going over each monster's characteristics and providing answers to formidable questions such as how and why I collected the minis and why I think they're important to have in your D&D games. But please be sure to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Today, we take a drive-by look at a monster type that is more than meets the eye. Awaken trees, let's get it on. Awakened trees are huge plants that are given sentience and mobility via spells and other magical means. Composed of thick bark, solid wood, and wide branches, an awakened tree has an armor class 13 and 59 hit points on average, and its mobility is only 20 feet. Moreover, much like real trees, an awakened tree is vulnerable to fire, but is resistant to bludgeoning and piercing damage. Its passive perception is quite low at 10, and it knows only one language that its creator spoke. Arguably, the awakened tree's most unique feature is its false appearance ability which makes it impossible to identify when it remains motionless amongst other normal trees. Lastly, awakened trees use one attack by slamming their mighty branches upon anyone looking for a fight. With a reach of 10 feet, a plus six to hit, and dealing 3d6 plus four bludgeoning damage, awakened trees can lay the smack down on low level adventurers who might find themselves lost down a dark path in a dark wood on a dark night. That said, let's take a look at my collection. Behold, my collection, collection Waken Wake tree. tree. As you can see, I literally just use my scenic trees as Awaken trees. And that's what makes them a perfect monster to have, and I think an essential mini to have in your DM collection if you're collecting scenery or terrain. It basically is a two for one, and you can use them um, to start up lots of different combat encounters. So, for example, I even have these ones that are sort of frosted. I would use them as the trees that have actually awakened so that the players would know who are actually, which ones are actually awakened trees and which ones are just docile. I mean, you could have the whole woods as awakened trees too, which is really cool. But for an actual like fair combat encounter, I use these different ones to symbolize the awakened trees and that's good enough for me. Perhaps there are models of awakened trees that really have different characteristics or seem to be more alive or animated like Ents, for example. However, I think this is the best way to use them when you're just trying to, you know, expand your collection. So that's one of the coolest things about awakened trees uh, is just you get to use the scenery as them. So, you know, different hobby shops, I got these a couple packs of these trees that came like there's quite a few of them. And then I also accent them with these Christmas trees from an old Charles Dickens village I used to have. And they're perfect. So you can find, I mean, find them wherever you can find them. And like I said, these ones really do help me highlight which ones are the awakened trees um, without getting too, I suppose, phony or... Like again, I just like how you can easily be like, yep, these ones are now moving and the players can know um, where the danger's coming from. All right, so hopefully you can add these to your collection as well. Again, the multi-purpose and you're always gonna have them ready to go. I would keep some awakened stats, awakened tree stats to the side so that in case the players are moving too quick or too slowly or they haven't fought enough, you can always bust out an awakened tree combat encounter and it always can make sense. We'll talk about a few more different ways we can use them coming up right now. Ah, Awakened Trees. Honestly, one of my favorite monster types in D&D. Easy to understand, easy to implement, and easy on the eyes. I mean, they could be beautiful if it weren't for their desire to plant your party in the ground. However, one of the coolest aspects of Awakened Trees is that it isn't really their desire to do anything at all. They've been brought to life by a powerful spellcaster or spell and are purposed to carry out the will of their creator, nothing more. When first encountered, players who make a nature check to determine these trees were brought to life by magic will then have the mystery of who done it. I mean, come on, the trees didn't just stand up and walk on their own, did they? In this way, I love how awakened trees provide an immediate breadcrumb that could lead to a greater power source, villain, or NPC. Furthermore, despite their mundane appearance, awakened trees are useful in so many unique ways, including ambushing or getting adventurers lost, spying on them, 
communicating with them, surrounding or blocking an important objective or building, random wilderness encounters, and so much more. For example, adventurers are exploring a forest on the edges of civilization in search of a mysterious artifact of ancient power and glory. But wait, they've been searching for a really long time. And haven't they seen that rock shaped like an owlbear before? Who does Sadly, it? Sadly, the party has failed many a survival check and have gone in circles while the awakened trees have been subtly rearranging themselves to keep the adventurers lost forever. And it's not the wind they heard, it's been the quiet murmurings of the trees strategizing against them the whole time. Or perhaps the adventurers spot a ruined tower in the distance. It looks safe enough, but as they approach within 60 feet, suddenly the trees uproot themselves, forming a barrier, preventing the player's access to the tower and whatever treasure it holds inside. Or you can try this. During one of my campaigns, my players were defending a town from an oncoming force, but after a couple of rounds, I had the trees within the walls of the town awake, which helped increase the tension and difficulty of the combat encounter and shocked my players out of their previous hold the perimeter strategy. Who done also, it, done it. awakened trees are not inherently evil, and I appreciate that they can also be used as guides who can potentially communicate with the adventurers to actually help them find a certain location or person. An elvish community, for example, might use Awakened Trees to welcome or inform adventurers who speak Elvish about themselves and their town, for example. Therefore, I feel that Awakened Trees are a highly malleable monster in the hands of a creative DM, and easy to implement on the fly if necessary. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed my quick analysis of Awakened Trees. If you have any cool ideas about them or how to use them, let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoy the content, please hit that like button, subscribe, and share the video. There'll be more new content next week. Until then, remember, all D&D, all, &D, all, &D, all, &D, all day all long, day long, all night till dawn.